All right, today is April 1st, 2012, and this ain't no April Fool's joke. All right, I picked up my second piece of wild Alaskan salmon, and I want to test it. But it seemed like I was getting a high reading already, as you can see there. So I got the piece of salmon in the other room. I want this number to calm down a little bit here, so... I can pull in the salmon and do the test. A little background here. The inspector, the radiation alert inspector, it counts ionizing events and displays the results in that liquid crystal display. Whenever the inspector is operating and the red count light flashes, that means there's an ionizing event each time for a count. So for some reason today we have quite a bit of background it seems because I got that piece of salmon in the other room. So I'm gonna go get it real quick here and we'll do do a reading. So here's this receipt. I bought it yesterday. So this salmon was previously frozen because it was caught last year and now it's thawed. So what you're eating right now is salmon that was caught last year. So let's pull it out. Here it comes. Go wash my hands real quick. I'll be right back in two seconds. All right, here we go. I'm going to float the detector right above it without touching it so I don't contaminate my little unit there. Radioactive material from the Fukushima nuclear disaster has been found in tiny sea creatures and ocean water some 186 miles or 300 kilometers off the coast of Japan. In some places, researchers from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution discovered cesium radiation hundreds to thousands of times higher than would be expected naturally. The earthquake and tsunami of March 11th 2011 led to large releases of radioactive elements from the Fukushima Daiichi power plants into the Pacific Ocean. To find out how that radiation spread in the waters off Japan, in June researchers released drifters which are small monitoring devices that move with the current and take measurements of the surrounding water. The drifters are tracked via GPS showing the direction of currents over the period of five months. Meanwhile, the team also took samples of zooplankton, tiny floating animals, and fish, measuring the concentration of radioactive cesium in the water. Radioactive cesium, believed to be released during the crisis at the Fukushima No. 1 nuclear power plant, has been found in plankton, about 600 kilometers east of the facility, according to a Japan-U.S. joint research team. Follow-up studies will be necessary because radioactive cesium is likely to have accumulated in fish that eat plankton, the team said. As of April 2012, researchers say 18,000 trillion becquerels of radioactive iodine and cesium have leaked from the plant into the sea. 
water contaminated by radioactivity that entered the sea from the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant will reach the Hawaiian Islands in about March of 2014 according to a computer simulation by the Japan Atomic Energy Agency. The contaminated water will be carried by ocean currents into the Sockeye Salmon Range. Sockeye Salmon Range is as far south as the Columbia River in the Eastern Pacific and Northern Hokkaido Island in Japan in the Western Pacific and as far north as Bathurst Inlet in the Canadian Arctic in the east and the Andrian River in Siberia in the west. Sockeye salmon, unlike other species of Pacific salmon, feed extensively on zooplankton during both freshwater and saltwater life stages. Their many gill rakers strain the plankton from the waters. This radiation is going to alter our oceans drastically. Salmon lives in the sea until maturity, one to seven years depending on the species. Some migrate thousands of miles in the sea. They then return to the place where they hatched and continue their cycle. Get some off that skin. Since marine phytoplankton is the base of our food chain, there are grounds for concern about bioaccumulation of radioactive substances in the food chain, particularly in seaweed, kelp, and shellfish. The entire web of ocean life, from the great whales to the variety of microscopic life, this entire vast ecosystem has been poisoned from which we get a great source for nutritional sustenance. Question the origin of all seafood. Fish and crustaceans from the Pacific Ocean should all be considered be possibly poisoned with radiation. Now with strontium leaking into the oceans, tons more highly contaminated water enters the sea. The nuclear plant stability brings into question when exactly will this disaster end. Considering that the release of this size has never happened in the ocean, there are so many unknown effects that will arise. All you hear from the experts is the radioactivity levels are still below what is allowed in food. Radiation from the Fukushima nuclear plant disaster in Japan is now actively in the ecosystem. All along the North American West Coast, even the seaweed is now radiated. The governments of the United States and Canada are not conducting tests for radioactivity, at least not to the knowledge of the public. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has agreed to continue purchasing seafood from Japan, despite the fact that the food is not being tested for radioactive contamination. Last November, independent testing in Japan showed 65% of the catches tested positive for cesium, a radioactive material. Instead of refusing to purchase the poisoned fish, food safety agencies in both the United States and Canada have simply raised the acceptable level of radiation. Radioactive isotopes of the type released from Fukushima have a half-life of 30,000 years. Out of the thousand radioactive products released at Fukushima, 93 are long-lived radioactive elements lasting anywhere from 17,000 years to billions of years in total decay life. This means that we must permanently change the way we prepare our food. Scientists have predicted that Fukushima's longer living isotopes, such as cesium-137, with a half-life of 30 years, will reach Hawaii in about a year and the coast of California in two to three years. By that time, the isotopes should be significantly diluted from mixing with ocean water. Well, that may be correct, but the Fukushima nuclear plants are still spewing millions of particles of radioactive material even after a year after the disaster into the ocean and into the air. So the dilution, there is no dilution when more of the substances are being put into the ocean. The earth is a contained environment. Eventually, if you fill a bowl of water up, it will overflow. My conclusion. My conclusion is that I believe that there is radiation in our seafood. Unfortunately, I think the accident has, is really 
at the beginning of really spoiling the uh, whole abundance of of different uh, sea creatures that we eat for our sustenance and nutritional um, values that help us keep healthy but now it's just a real bummer they introduced um, invisible uh, radioactive isotopes that we can't see that's what's the scariest part of it we can't see it and we don't know the extent of the damage so I believe that uh, the purer the gene pool the less mutations will have as a human species and mutations cause cancer so it's a, just a real bummer that uh, Japan in this accident uh, pretty much I hate to say it uh, they ruined uh, the food supply of the world and uh, humans will suffer for it but what I don't understand is I hope that Japan realizes that they can't do that themselves they can't fix it they need help from it, the whole world has got to come together on this or else it might uh, hurt the earth so much that uh, it m it could may kill out our species we're getting mutated uh, bacterias I think the blue green bacterias are emitting like a million becquerels and and it's just it's spreading and it's a very it's a very scary story but we have these radioactive mutant species that uh, may really do the human species some harm so and look at the maps the ocean convection belt is distributing the radiation throughout the Pacific the radiation releases are not abating they're getting worse if digesting only a few radioisotopes doesn't bother you what bothers me I wonder if you knew what the amount was that was present I know because I'm testing it but if you knew what number would be your cutoff to eat it well I decided I'm not eating the fish I threw that piece of salmon out this time unlike the first test I am starting to really feel unsafe about our food supply and it's only been a year and there's more radiation spewing it may get worse so that means there might be even more radiation and all they did the US and the Canadian government they just raised the level of allowable radioactive isotopes in our food and you could only r keep raising that so many times and it's gonna be so high that we're gonna really be screwed so this we need to do something like I said they cannot do this all by themselves why am I doing these tests I'm doing these tests to set a baseline because we will be able to understand better if in the years to come whether not only salmon but other seafood if it's safe to consume I'm trying to set a baseline like I said and I will keep continuing testing the food year after year after year and we'll know if it's getting better or out of control if my meter starts reading into the hundred count per minute we can assume that something seriously is wrong this may be jeopardizing our ability to consume seafood safely so keep abreast of the situation I'll come back from my updates and I the, anything more stuff that I could think of, of testing I'm gonna test it and uh, see where we stand in 2012 because we never know if we'll make it to 2015 you know supposedly 10 percent of Japan is uninhabitable um, it could get worse where 
there is no island in Japan. There will be no people able to live there. They'll be all dead. And I don't want to wait till then to solve this or to do something about it. So um, spread the word. Don't be afraid to talk about it. And uh, it, we're in a sad situation. We're in a bad situation. It seems a little bit, it's out of control. We need first to stop the radiation from getting into the environment. That's it. That's the bottom line.